So uh, you've got a new album coming out this week. I can't believe mm-hmm. it's already time. So yeah. Is For Lovers is out on Friday. Mm-hmm. And when did the writing begin for this album? Um, we, uh, we didn't write the record. We just played. So we got together in a room uh, in February, March uh, 2019 and just played for five weeks every day. We'd make something. And then I took that music and then uh, wrote songs on top of it and dressed it up. And then Jesse mastered it, um, the finishing step of any quality recording um in march 2020 so this this thing has been uh sitting underneath us like a like a like a nuclear bomb for uh for a whole year uh Mm. and which was difficult at the beginning um but now that it's coming out and we're talking about it uh i am i'm happy we waited and also we've come to really love the record even more than we did after uh having made it so um, it's just, man, what a, what a treat to share this kind of thing with somebody. It's so rare. Not everyone gets to share their art with people. So it's a yeah. gift that we're, 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 um, fortunate to, uh, to be able to share. Yeah. Well, it's interesting to know that you, you've been sitting on it for a while because I was, I was going to ask, I know this is your first self-produced album. And so mm-hmm. I was curious if that was because of the pandemic, if it was almost like a an easier thing or if it was something you guys had decided uh, as a conscious choice long before the pandemic even began. Gladly the the pandemic had nothing to do with our record. Uh, But no, we had wanted to, we'd wanted to self-produce a record for a very long time, but I think we were uh, hesitant to take on that responsibility. Mm -hmm. But at this point, if we didn't know how to do it, I mean, we were never going to, we were never going to do it. So we, we, uh, we finally did it. And I think that it is the best sounding record that we've ever made. It was certainly the least stressful record. You know, it's just, it's just the two of us and we're not a democracy, right? If we disagree, it's a, it's a stalemate. So we have to, we have to figure it all out as we go. Um, and there was no other voice there telling us that what we were doing wasn't right or was wrong and or that anything, what Sebastian's phrase that I like, no one told us to fix anything. So we didn't fix it. It was just nice. Uh, and it didn't need it. <laughs> yeah. It was like on, on the song love letter. Um, I was, uh, I was very self-conscious to show it to Jesse cause it's such a sweet song, but it's like, he wrote the chords. It's not like, it's not like it was a great surprise as to what was going to happen at the end of it. Um, but when I showed it to him, he said, don't change anything. It's like, don't like I, it was a, it was essentially a demo. You know, I, I was, I was presenting this as an idea. Like maybe we could, re- this could be the kind of song. Um, but the vocal you hear on it is, is the, is me figuring out the idea. Um, nice. And that's the way it is for a lot of the record because making a record is like thousands and thousands of small little things and details. And, you know, at the end of it, you go like, we made a record, but like made a record is a title when there's all these subcategories and it's so dynamic and complicated that really, if you're taking it on as two people, um, you have to just go like, no, that's good. We're, let's keep that, you know? So a lot of the, 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 the takes are, our first takes and things because we had mm-hmm. to move on to finish the record and then <laughs> sit on it for a year. Yeah. Well, I guess when you don't have, when you don't have like lackeys that you can be like, okay, listen, we laid down enough yeah. stuff yeah. for you to work on for a little while. Yeah. No, keep no lackeys. But, yeah. but what ends up happening is it has that, the exuberance of a new idea. It has that in it mm-hmm. baked in because of the way we made it. Um, so it retains a propellant energy that sometimes gets, unfortunately it gets ironed out. And in modern music, it's, um, I find modern music, I mean, I'm an old man now, so, um, <laughs> but I find it exhausting to listen to things that are perfect, things that are too mm-hmm. all tuned, all of the beats land where you think they're going to land every yep. single beat, you know, it's like, you know what? Hi-hats are supposed to be a little bit wild, ladies and gentlemen, they're supposed to be a little bit wild. Uh, yeah. listen to uh, Stuart Copeland, who's one of the greatest hi-hat players in the world. And, his hats are wild, guys. They're wild. 
<laughs> well, it's, what, do, what do we like about movie plots? It's when things are unpredictable, when we mm-hmm. don't expect stuff to happen. I mean, imagine it's a movie where you knew at every moment what the next event was going to be. I mean, how, how many times are you going to watch that thing? You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I think it's, it's, for us, it's the, the most comfortable way to work. And uh, I think probably the most, most fruitful in the end. Yeah. I, that's so interesting. I literally had that conversation not that long ago with one of my coworkers. Cause we had, this was a long time ago, I guess now, but one of the bands that we had in last year before everything got shut down, they played a song live and I was like, Oh my God, this song is so good. And then we heard the recorded version and I was like, what happened here? Like it's sort of, it didn't have any of the, I don't know, any of that natural. The, it's the rub. Yeah. Yeah. The rub, the rub is very important. Friction in music is very important. Yeah. It's what makes music exciting and sexy and, 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 uh, and it's what makes you lean into it a little bit more. Uh, there's this, uh, I think it's the rapture. Do you remember the band, the rapture? They're, mm. uh, they had a, a big song called House of Jealous Lovers, which is kind of a dance punk. It was in the, our, the early days of Death Room Above. They were kind of a big deal. In fact, Jesse was talking about this recently where, unbeknownst to me, <laughs> uh, we were invited to play open for Daft Punk um, back in the day, but we were already broken up. Um, oh, no. the, band, the band that took our place was The Rapture. They, they were the ones who got that spot. Um, all this to say that when you listen to their early recordings, it is so, they're so raw. It's insane. Like the chances they take and there are mistakes like quote unquote mistakes on the, on those records. It's like Nina Simone. You listen to Nina Simone. Hmm. She's not, she's not in key 20% of the time. Maybe that's a little bit unfair. Maybe it's 10% of the time, but she's like (laughs) often going for something and the tension of her, not quite getting there and then breaking through and getting there is what makes it compelling. It's why people yeah. still listen to Nina Simone today. If she yeah. was as uh, fixed up as, uh, I don't know, Demi Lovato or something with all due respect, I don't think people would listen to her 50 years, 60 years down the line. Yeah. I think it's very true. It sort of captures more of the, uh, the present moment of music because that's what's missing. I think a lot is sort of music nowadays does feel like it's sort of uh, created to, to just exist and go through a machine as opposed to being, um, being present in each moment, which is the beauty of live music that we haven't been able to enjoy for like a year. But anyway, well, we make, we make records. That's our art. It's making a record and a record mm-hmm. is, is that it's a record of, of time of, of a, of a moment in time. And so you're trying to capture something that is real, that existed. Um, and when you, when you, uh, iron that out over the course of a year or two years or whatever, however long it takes or uh, whatever, I don't know, to, how long does it take to make a hit song or, well, it doesn't take any time actually. You just click a button and everything <laughs> Nowadays, falls into yeah. place. Yeah. You put on the put on hit song plug in and, uh, and it does it for you. Yeah. 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 Um, so I love, well, first of all, I love that how you make records and it's a record in time. It's a record mm-hmm. of time. Mm-hmm. Did, please tell me that that's an original quote. Because we need to get that on sure. T-shirts immediately. I mean, if you go to Wikipedia and you yeah, type in a record, it'll be. say what I just said, <laughs> basically. Uh, so I know that uh, your new album has some nods to the DFA debut album, which is kind of cool. What What was it like to to revisit some of that stuff from your debut, from your up and coming days, as sort of more experienced musicians and more experienced like, like human beings nowadays? What was that experience like revisiting older stuff? Uh, well, in in my younger days, uh, <laughs> I was uh, always trying to not repeat myself. Like I was very conscious of if I'd done anything, I had to musically I had to try to not do that again. Um, and so I much think, so that he wouldn't repeat the same part twice in a song. Yeah. <laughs> like, like you got to play the chorus, eight, Jesse, you got to play the chorus twice. You got to do it <laughs> at least twice. Like, play no. it one more time. It can happen again. Um, and that's, that's not even an exaggeration. Like that's really how I remember I played my dad a record I made and he's like, you got, you got eight records worth of parts here. <laughs> you got to spread this out. Um, but like that, that way of thinking also uh, 
makes us makes you miss out on uh, digging in on the good ideas that you had and exploring mm-hmm. them further. And I think that w- we've been doing this for long enough that 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 sort of discomfort uh, is gone. And also, uh, we have a totally different appreciation for what our band is now than I think we yeah. ever did before. You know, it's a it's a very strange thing to realize that this this thing that you made in a basement at, at one point is basically your life's work to this, to, to now anyway, let's, yeah. you never, we certainly didn't plan this. And then we made this record in a basement. Yeah. In one basement tiny little room. Basement for the win. It's the way to yeah. do it. Yeah. It's the only way to do it. Sounds like. Um, awesome. Well, I know you guys got to get going. Thank you so much for, for making some time to chat. Um, I'm excited to hear the rest of the album. We of course have been playing one plus one, which is, um, it's a, a bop. <laughs> I was going to, I was going to start cursing, but I feel like I should probably not do that. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah so still CRTC. Don't you have a cough involved. button there? <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking great. Um, Whoa. so we're looking Whoa. forward to <laughs> Whoa. Whoa, then. Whoa. Um, yeah, so I can't Here wait to hear the rest of it. I'm I'm pumped and um yeah yeah thanks so much I really appreciate it you guys and thanks thanks for good luck with on us. album debut day I hope it's a delight <laughs> it will be it always Sweet. is Ken thank you thanks for for the chat.